called the License Hearing and Public Safety Committee for August 24th, 2022 to order. Um, roll call. Uh, Dean Decker. Here. Alder person Joe Heidemann. Here. Alder person Becky Ackley. Here. And Alder person and Chair Barb Feldy. I am here. Okay, we have a quorum. Um, could everybody stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, introduction of many members. Sorry, I'm going to. I'm going to just skip through that. Um, approval of the minutes from August 10th, 2022. I will make a motion to approve. Second. Um, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Chair is an aye. Motion carries. Items for discussion and possible action. Resolution number 55-22-23-815-22. Hang on, I got to switch papers here. <laughs> a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute an agreement and act some geospatial for on demand GIS support to the Sheboygan Police Department. Okay. Chief, you want to take it over? Sure. So we're requesting um, your permission to enter into an agreement with Geospatial. The city has an Esri Geographical Information System or mapping system that they use um, that's run out of DPW. The police department um, is a partner in that. Um, and so we pull information out of our records management system into that system. So if you go online and look at our crime mapping, that's done that way. Information is pulled out of our records and dumped on that map and people can access it that way. Our crime analyst does the same thing, pulls information or data out of our records management and uses some of the tools to do analysis um, to provide information to officers and to the command staff um, in the police department so that we can make better decisions. Um, so what we're requesting is that we don't have the expertise uh, to do some of the things. So writing the code to make the connection for those dumps is something that we don't have anybody that can do and that IT doesn't have somebody that can do. Uh, so we need to hire somebody with some expertise to do that. So Geospatial is a company that the DVW has used in the past um, and that we use to make some of the connections. And so we're looking for this agreement as a pay-as-you-go thing. So if one of the systems gets updated and because of the updates, um, the connection gets broken, there's somebody that we can call up and they'll get in and fix it right away for us. Um, so for us, it's just a pay as you go. So uh, we're not paying any money up front. They're just uh, guaranteeing to provide the services at a certain cost that, that we know up front. Um, and then occasionally we might use them for some project work too, which that we would work through um, essentially doing a project with them, telling them what we're expecting and getting a, an estimate or a quote from them, how much it would cost before we would follow through on that. But this is an agreement that would allow that to happen. Are there any questions for the chief? Okay. Joe. GIS, what does that stand for? Just, I, I, it's a geographic information system. Okay. And we're looking at $10,000. Yep. Okay. So that 10,000 will last us how long? No, I can't tell you that. No. Okay, so then from then on, is there stuff that's going to be put into the budget? This is a great idea. So this this is part of our contract services. So in our budget, we have I would have to look, but somewhere between three and five thousand dollars that we use for different things that services that we may need during the year. So this would be one of those things if we would need. Um, we would get a grievance and Chuck's office either didn't have the expertise or had too many other things going and we were going to hire a labor attorney, we would use that. If um, we were, I got to think of what else. Yeah, I, am. I can't pull them off the top of my head now. But there's about three or four things that, that we don't always need, but we have a fund 
essentially that if they do if we do need it this is where we would go and then if there wouldn't be enough money there then we would have to go to the council and go to todd and, and caitlin and, and find some other funds that we could use all right thank you anybody else well, i'm glad that we're going with the company that's it's all set for ISIS. Okay. I need a motion. Oh, fine. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I move uh, to uh, to looking for approve the resolution. Approve the resolution. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Number seven, resolution number 56 22 a resolution authorizing entering into an intergovernmental cooperative agreement with the village of Polar with regards to providing city of city of Sheboygan fire department, fire personnel, equipment and or services in response to mass casualty events that result from an act of violence at the Aurora Medical Center, Sheboygan County, located at 3400 Union Avenue. Um, Chief Mont Montalano. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chair. So, yeah, um, as I'm sure you're aware, uh, with the new hospital, they contracted services with City PD to provide security for, for the hospital. So. Uh, we were requested uh, several, several months ago to um, also in an active, let's just call it an active shooter, but a large scale event, mass casualty, some type of event like that, that um, our fire department personnel would also respond to assist uh, PD. Um, AC Lubert has been uh, instrumental in working with the PD in developing a program for training. Uh, that's why I brought him along so he could kind of explain it because it's it's kind of confusing as far as what we do. But um, so the village approached uh, me uh, to see if we would be uh, willing to uh, allow the fire department to respond in coordination uh, with the PD to an event like this. So before, um, so we can kind of avoid some questions, I'm going to have Mike explain a little bit of how we train with the PD and what we would do on scene and why it's important for that. Uh, so typically over the last, like, I'd say like four or five years here, we got together with the police department and we started to sit down and go, all right, if we have these active threat situations, like somebody walked into city hall here and started shooting, like, how do we deal with this in a coordinated effort? So what we did is we came together and we got a plan. The PD kind of going to start to go in. Our department responds. We kind of set up a barrier outside and we start to team up our paramedics, our EMTs with their groups that are going in to deal with the threat. So they send their officers in first to go in and start dealing with the active threat. Then as the more officers show up, we start to send them in with people equipped with emergency medical equipment to treat things such as bleeding and stuff like that. So um, it's a coordinated effort where they go in and then we go and we treat the life safety part of it as well. And then we can use our trust to set up a barrier so that we can set up a command post there for all the incoming resources and units um, that will come in and kind of help with this situation because these tend to be very labor intensive and um, require a lot of different departments and agencies coming in. So um, one of the things we kind of got approached with was when the PD kind of contracted with the hospital, the county had a little bit of a different situation. So if they had responded there for an active threat right away, um, we wouldn't have been part of their coordinated response without um, this intergovernmental agreement. So being that we work closely together and we already have a plan how we're going to work together um, with a fast response time, um, we thought that it would be in everybody's best interest that we when they respond for that active threat there, we respond with them as well so that we can have the same coordinated response that they're used to and our guys are used to just like we would in the city here. Um, essentially, we would end up there anyways at some point because those situations go into what we call like our mutual aid box alarm system. They'll pull a life safety card and we'll start to send resources to the city. I'm no different than if we had that same event here, we would pull our active threat life safety card and we would start to pull in resources from not only this county, but surrounding counties as well, as far as ambulances and EMTs go. So really what this agreement does is it allows us to provide, um, help the, T the PD provide their services in the manner that they're accustomed to, as well as um, gets us there faster. We're gonna get there anyways, but this will allow them to activate us right away with the PD versus having to wait like five to six minutes for the dispatch center to wait for the fire department to pull their Mavis box card for us to respond and our guys to be covered. 
Any questions? Oh, we do have a down. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Um, I, what kind of, because I know the PD were compensated for that. Are we compensated, going to be compensated? For yeah, this is not, that's why it's an agreement. It's not a compensation thing for us. Okay. These events, thankfully, yes. are few and far between. Um, but truly, it was not only to provide a service, but to work and protect our PD and work alongside our PD. We train with them within the city, as Mike explained. They're accustomed to that training. So if they had an event there that we weren't there, the county doesn't respond in the same manner. So it was really to benefit our PD. So yes, there isn't a compensation. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and not only do our guys want to take care of the victims, but they also want to take care of their guys as well. So they have to, yeah. And, and that was my question also, but my other question would be, so this is customary for communities our size that have other parts of the state that have facilities outside of their city boundaries that their local fire departments do this? So this isn't the only one in the state Oh, he, no, there's other agreements. However, it's not every fire department has an aggressive response like we do working with their PD. Some departments don't go in. Example, the whole county does not go into a hot zone, if you right. will. Uh, we will. We'll go in coordination with the PD. So it is not the same throughout the state or other states. But some do, absolutely. There are other departments and other city municipalities that go in uh, with their PD. Where I came from, it did. You yeah. know, it, it just depends on the region and the area. So not all of them are the same. So I think you have a faster response time than Polar because yeah. this is a volunteer fire department. True. And the, the other aspect of this is had it been, as Mike explained, through the normal mutual aid channels, we wouldn't send three engines and an ambulance. We would send an ambulance or we may send two ambulances. This, because our PD is there, we are sending multiple units. So we are going to send, if you approve the agreement, um, three engines and an ambulance or three engines and two ambulances. Um, we are truly doing it for our PD. Sorry. That's right. And we did. We, we spent a lot of time with the fire department on the scope of this agreement. Okay. And I know, I, you know, I think I hear your concerns and we addressed a lot of those concerns by making sure the scope of this agreement was really about a public interest for the city, okay. uh, which is protecting our police well, officers. Sure. Yeah. And that's what we want to do. Yeah. Any other questions? Motion. I need a motion. I will make a motion to second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Chair says aye. Motion carried. Thank you for your support. RO number 562223, direct referral by city clerk submitting various license application. We're recommending all the applications on that arrow will be granted. Grant all those applications. Second. Questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Chair says aye. Motion carried. RO, num RO number 552223-81522 by City Clerk submitting a license application, 55 North Star. And we're also uh, re recommending that this application be granted. I make a motion to grant this license. Second. Uh, are there any questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Chair says aye. Motion carried. We're on to next meeting date. Next meeting date will be September 14th, 2022. And then I'm up for motion for adjournment. Sorry. Everybody <laughs> in favor? Aye. Uh, okay, thank you. All right. Chair votes aye.